Greetings viewers, Eric the Car Guy here with Paul Cangiolosi, who is a transmission guru, expert, Yoda kind of guy. And where we're rebuilding the T5 transmission for my Fairmont project, I thought, hey, why don't we just do a quick run through of how a manual transmission actually operates. So we have the gear set here on the bench. We're gonna run through what happens when you're shifting gears in your car as you're driving down the road. Paul, take it away. Okay, so this is a T5 five speed. Mm -hmm. And let me just put this fifth gear on here in the back. And, and this, th these principles pretty much work the same whether this is front wheel drive or rear wheel right. drive or anything. It's just a gear set like this. What you have to remember is that all the gears are always floating on the shafts, except for the input shafts. In other words, so, the drive gear. So whether it's a front wheel drive or mm -hmm. a rear wheel drive, the main drive section is always driving. So this would be the main shaft, correct? This is the main shaft, this is your input shaft, these mm -hmm. are your speed gears, your first gear, second gear, third gear, this is your counter gear, and these are your fifth gears over here. Right. This is, people call these either input shafts or main drive gears. So the power flow always on these is that it's going from the main drive. Yeah, the clutch, the clutch is right here. Clutch is right here. So the engine, the clutch is attached to the flywheel. Right, so this the is engine. always, the main yeah. drive is always attached to the engine yeah. when the clutch is you always, know, engaged. Always there, yeah. And what happens is it's driving down through the cluster. So this is the headset. And that's driving all the time. That's always spinning. But if I remove this cluster from the equation here right now, you'll notice that these gears are just floating on the shaft. Okay, the shaft is actually just freewheeling. All these gears are freewheeling on the shaft. When you make a shift, basically you're locking that particular gear to the output shaft. Yeah. So when I put this back together here like this, in this fashion. That. We have that right here. All right. Just real quick as a demonstration. This is what's connected to your shifter inside the car. And these are the shift forks which go into here, and as you move this in and out and up and down, it will move these collars here, which right. is about to show you. So what happens is, is that when you are going to make a shift, you have synchronizers, and I have a whole video on synchronizers that's actually probably one of my better videos. And the but, synchronizers are these guys that are down in here underneath right. these collars. So what right. happens is you, the synchronizer is going to, if you notice, if I kind of hold these gears steady here like this, the synchronizer is actually part of the main shaft. It's locked to it, okay? So what happens is, is that when you make a shift, the synchronizer acts like a clutch in itself on a mm -hmm. brake, and it slows down the gear to synchronize it to the speed of the output shaft, like this, and locks it now. The power flow now in first gear is going from the main drive through the cluster gear up to this gear through the synchronizer and out to the output shaft. Yeah, this is connected to the drive shaft. Right, so what happens so is it goes from the main drive section again down to the counter gear. Because now we've shifted this into gear, we've locked the, first gear, the physical first gear to the output shaft via the synchronizer going out this way. If we go shift into second and go this way, let's get it back out of gear here. So now if we go into second gear this way, I gotta go. This has got bad synchros. <laughs> <laughs> we'll this have to do something about that. There we go. There we go. Okay. So now what happens is the same thing. Is now we've got power going from the main drive down through the cluster up through second, which is now attached to the main shaft via the synchronizer and out. And out. Same now, thing. Same thing with third and, and so third gear. Okay. Same thing. You go out that way. You go from the main drive now to the cluster up through third through the synchronizer and out. and out. Now, fourth is direct. It's one-to-one. -one. So there is no fourth gear in a five-speed or in a four-speed. You're just locking the two shafts together. So it's one-to-one. -one. Whatever right. revolutions the engine right. is so spinning is this what is, comes out This is floating, you see, on the shaft. There's bearings inside of it. So when you shift into fourth gear, right, now you've locked this to the shaft and it's one-to-one. -one. Yeah, that's the whole assembly. And that's it. And the whole thing works like that. It's that simple. Fourth gear in this car, as you just showed, was one-to-one. -one. So it's basically taking the revolutions of the crankshaft and transferring it directly to the, to the drive mechanism yes. of the transmission. Uh, but what about overdrive? Okay, now if you notice on the overdrive gears, which is the fifth speed set in the back, okay, the fifth gear itself is spline directly to the output shaft, the driven gear. Okay, and you notice it's locked to it completely. Yet this one is floating on the counter shaft. So what happens is our power flow now goes from the input shaft down to the counter shaft, and we have this assembly here, which will lock the gear with the splines to the shaft, mm -hmm. then up to the overdrive. Now, if you notice, this gear is way bigger than this gear. Mm -hmm. So what happens is this is your drive gear. So now it's running almost in an opposite. It's giving you an right. overdriven ratio. So because if you notice on these gears are actually kind of 
This is first gear, look how big it is to this. Now right. it's actually the complete opposite. You see the way they are. Correct. So what happens is how you get your overdrive. So now your ratios are kind of flipped. So typically where you might have, like say, a two to one first gear, now you have a point, you know, seven three ratio instead of like a you know a two fifty two ratio. And also when I talk about ratios different on T fives, but you have to understand is how the ratios are calculated. And what's going on here is that ratios are always through a pair of gears, not one gear set. Mm -hmm. So what happens is your formula, if you want to link this up, is driven divided by drive multiplied by driven divided by drive. If you ever want to figure out gear ratios and, and figuring out how transmissions work. So here, this is the driven, mm -hmm. this is the drive. So that's one ratio pair. Right. Okay. As we go up, now this is the drive because it's driving this gear and this is the driven. Mm -hmm. So again, driven divided by drive. Once again. Right. So multiplied by driven divided by drive gives you your ratio. So your 335 first gear ratio of this transmission is a combination of two ratio sets actually. Mm -hmm. The set coming in and the set going out. And same thing for the overdrive. And it's also interesting with the lower gears. This is going to spin many more times than this is going to spin in one revolution. Right. So this will spin several revolutions for every one revolution of this in Correct. first gear. The opposite occurs, as you said later, uh, when you go into overdrive to mm -hmm. where you've got your driven gear, which is going to spin less, less than the output than the, shaft. It's than the output shaft as a result. So right. really, I, I think of it a lot like 10 speed bicycles. I always say the same thing. Yeah. And, and you're switching through the gears right. and the chain. Because I mean, that's an easy way to see right. it. Here, and, also, just, and also when you think about a 10 speed bicycle, think about the effort on your feet. Exactly my point, yes. Yeah. And that's, what you're, that's the same thing your engine is going through. The right. engine works within a given RPM range. Right. The transmission is designed to maximize if that If you're feeding the engine, and you start off in 10th gear, you're going to struggle getting, getting going. Exactly. Right. So you start off in lower gear, so it's easier to pedal until you gain right. momentum, and then you start switching to the higher gears right. and away you go. And, and actually, if you want to even go use that 10-speed bicycle as a great example, is ratio spreads. If you go gradually up the gears, it's easier on your feet as you go reach your top speed. Mm -hmm. But say, for example, you jump from, say, first gear to, say, fourth to 10th, mm -hmm. that would be like a wide ratio drop. Okay. You have a big load change now on your, on your legs, right. and your drivetrain is going to see that same action. So if you stop on the car and you, don't have, and you have a super wide ratio box, you're going to start breaking things mm -hmm. because you're going to go from one extreme to the next extreme, and your clutch and your rear end are going to suffer from that. So you want a, a gradual transition between right. gears and a mm -hmm. nice smooth power delivery. And the more gears you have, like now there tends, seems to be a tendency with you know, nine speed, eight yeah, it's speed crazy transmissions, stuff, right. all these other transmissions. It's for efficiency. Exactly, to yeah. keep that engine within a low RPM range right. for fuel efficiency mm -hmm. and everything else. Can we talk a little bit about the synchronizers themselves and how right. they work? You know, whenever, whenever this is transitioning between one gear to the next, when you move this collar as it's moving, this, this whole assembly is spinning, as you said. Right. But these little grooves yeah. in here are designed to sort of slow that shaft down to allow that transition. What happens is, is that if you want to look at a ring, let's see. Uh, we can yeah, do there it. you go. Okay. What happens is, is normally the synchronizer ring, it's a little bit complicated. But in general, if you notice, there's a taper here. Now, and whether we have this kind of setup or a line setup, mm -hmm. it's still a taper because it's a clutch action. It's a cone clutch. Okay. So what happens is as the ring applies to the gear and you shift, you push the ring up against the gear, and it kind of locks up against it, okay? Mm -hmm. And it'll grab the gear and lock. When a ring goes bad, it goes flat. If you notice here on this particular setup here. This is moving back and forth inside of this collar, and this is the shift. Your shift fork is going to be in here moving this back and forth. Right. So that's what's happening underneath. These, the little, these little engagement dogs, basically, you see these little, te these little engagement teeth in here, these little tiny three little dogs they're called? Mm -hmm. They will push the ring up against the gear, and that will and that engages energize that. it. Okay, so what happens is the, the ring goes, gets pushed, as if the gear is turning this way, for example, and the ring gets pushed up against it, it's going to turn with it. Mm -hmm. That's going to force it to go against these teeth and the slider here, and in order for those teeth to go past it, the load has to change and it goes in the opposite direction. So all these, all these teeth eventually end up locking together, right? and that's where you get that power transfer. So when, it, when a ring goes bad, it's no longer grabbing the gear. When you get a grinding gear, it's no longer grabbing the gear. Yeah, so it wears internally. Happens. Exactly. The, the synchronizers themselves wear inside here. You may not even see it. It may look like it's fine. Sometimes they warp even, yeah. you know? And so, but you can look over here. And you'll see that you have 
Usually like first gear, for example, never goes bad because you're standing still putting it in first gear. Mm -hmm. So if we take, let's say, uh, this thing here and we look, we have a gap here, okay, but it's not that much. It's already gone. These rings are worn. They're flattened out. And you see, this one is up against the gear. We've lost that cone. Mm -hmm. and, um, but notice that these have some space to them, okay? Now, usually when you get a box like this and all the rings are really flat, as this one is, it indicates that probably they had a clutch release issue. Mm -hmm. And the rings were working harder than they should work because for this ring to stop the gear from turning like this. Yeah, and there's a, all the power of the engine and everything is going through this. Right, so and when you, you have to understand it, it comes down to just where that meets there. Right, so what happens is when you obviously disengage the engine from the transmission using the clutch, Correct. okay, the ring can do its job properly. Mm -hmm. But if the clutch isn't releasing, and a lot of the Mustangs that you have there, like they have that cable system in them, the cables stretch out, they don't release properly, and you get these intermittent grinds because now you got drag, and the engine load starts to burn that ring up because it's trying to stop the gear, but it can't because the engine's still attached to it. So it heats it up and then it warps the ring. And in this case, these are world class rings that are lined with paper, the paper falls off. Okay. The bonding becomes too hot and the heat causes the paper to you know, basically just fall off the ring. So they're no longer effective. Right. A little bit more in depth than just an explanation of how a manual transmission works, but the extra information about the synchronizers I think is important because it's, you really need to understand how the synchronizer works in order to understand how the manual transmission operates. Anyway, Paul. Thank Look you at those so dirty much. Hands, yeah, yeah? These dirty hands. <laughs> Thank you so much for helping us out with this and the build. It'll be links in the description to uh, Paul's book and Paul's website. There's actually a video I have on YouTube and for also rings. Also a video on YouTube that we'll link down there that further explains some of the stuff that we discussed here. I can be found on Google Plus, Facebook, Twitter, also Instagram. Close each of my videos. Be safe. Have fun. We're staying dirty today. I'll see you next time. <laughs>